out of here. These are uh, cozy in here. I like the stage. Um, right. So I'm gonna read two short pieces of fiction. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Cool. Here we go. I'm gonna start with a piece called La Rosa. Uh, I'm sorry. I gotta start over. I'm going to start with a piece called La Rosa Muerte. Marco's cousin told him real Spanish roses bloomed out of the bullfighting rings. That was nearly a fortnight ago when Raul convinced Marco to flee their coastal village. They spoke over the glow of lit matches in a dark alley behind their grandfather's kite shop. These shadows are nothing but city lights, Raul had said that night. His cool breath snuffed out the blue flame, and Marco watched the gray smoke drift to the pale stars above. Now the two cousins stand shoulder to shoulder in the rolling grandstands of Las Ventas. Over 20,000 seats in the fiercest bullfighting you'll ever see, Raul says, shaking his fist in the air. The crowd roars, stomping their boots against the muddy floorboards, as if the souls were chanting for death. Madrid, Marco says, capital of the setting sun. Yes, my cousin, Raul laughs, digging his grip into Marco's collarbone. Our blood runs through these streets. That's true, Marco says, I suppose. He watches the sound of his words fade into the ring, where the wounded bull lunges at a lancer on horseback. The beast stumbles along the cadencia, leaning into the walls, drunk from loss of blood. The crowd whistles, jeers, roars, and the floorboard cracks when the matador steps into the ring with cape and sword. Spectators all across Europe have crowned him Cortez de la Rosa, and tales of the spine-chilling estocadas whip like flames along the Spanish countryside. Merchants, farmers, and fishermen flood the settle and roam the bull rings to catch a glimpse of Cortez in his flailing red cape. Marco listened to their stories while mending the broken kites in his grandfather's workshop. And at noon, he tilled the fields until sunset, imagining his own set of picadors lancing a prized bull and how his three banderilleros would plunge their barbed sticks into the beast's lean muscle. That's when the tines of Marco's spading fork would meld into a matador's steel sword. He would pierce the garden soil as if it were the thick hide of the bull, stabbing straight through the aorta as the red sun emblazoned the beast with Spanish blood. And now, Marco watches Cortez approach the wounded bull, circling like a predator. La Rosa Muerte, Raul shouts. His voice dissolves into the battering grandstands of Las Ventas, where far below, the bull snorts blood, staggering over its hooves. Cortez halts in his tracks. He stares down his prey, summoning the arena to silence. The crowd hushes, and somewhere, a kestrel shrieks from afar. Slowly, the matador raises the wooden dowel, locking the audience in place. Cortez clicks the eternal clock and seizes all motion. The sun freezes over and the moon kills tide. Then, as if the matador could no longer suspend the grinding forces of space and time, his red cape unravels, and the laws of nature spill into order. Toro! His voice snaps, and the world cracks open. The bull lowers its horns, charges at Cortez, and then, in a red flash, the beast vanishes and reappears lifeless in the billows of dust and dirt. A dark, crimson pool of blood drains out of the animal's rib cage. Bravo, Raul claps. A quick, clean death. Only Marco no longer listens to his cousin. His mind has drifted up to the pale stars above, casting shadows over his grandfather's empty workshop. He sees the frayed bridles on the bench, 
the splintered spines on the table, empty spools in the cabinets, and outside the window, far beyond the abandoned fields, something else rises entirely. Above is a kite, clouds, nothing else. Palestine. The sun burns out the stretch of your soil, hard dirt, blood and sepulchre. My sore feet press the earth, lifting dust to Jerusalem. Pagans, my brother calls them. He is forty men ahead of me, marching, and calls out to Allah. The man alongside him lifts the AK-47, fires bullets at the sky. They pierce the clouds, birthmarks, blue flesh. No rain falls. Only the blood of maids I cannot imagine. I see the women from afar, wrapped in cloth and filling clay pots at the River Jordan where Hakeem drinks beer and throws empty cans at holy water. What are virgins, he told me. Me, sir, I am a virgin. Ha! He laughed, and now I watch the wind lift grains of Jerusalem to the other side of the horizon. My brother tells me Hakeem was drenched in the pools of Haram. They hung him at the shores of the Gaza Strip, Strange how his lips opened as if to speak, like dead tongues talking before they left his body. I snuck out of the caravan at night and watched him sway from a rope tied to the darkest branch. I peeled a long twig off the branch and took comfort drawing designs in the soil along the River Jordan, Hakeem dangling over me in the night swaying to the secret of the stars. I will never tell my brother. It is mine. I have stored it at the center of myself, where Allah pumps light into the plate of bones in my chest. I lift the muzzle of my AK-47, point the barrel over the flat earth, and pull the trigger at the sky. Do bullets go forever? I watch the sound of nothing travel over my brother, his laughing teeth, and Jerusalem. What is beyond the sky? My bullets strike the stars. Tonight, if I can see them, it is real. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>